going to create some crime scene tape that you've probably seen, of course, in the popular show CSI and other stuff like that. So what I'm going to do is I've got the words crime scene set on a text layer right here. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and create a new layer right beneath that active text layer, which is if I'm going to hold down the command or control key and click on the new layer icon, it will create a new layer beneath my active layer. Then I'm going to go and get my rectangular marquee tool. And I'm just going to draw a box that's going to be roughly the size of my tape. Let's make it a little bit wider. Then I'll go into my color picker, click on the color swatch in the foreground, and we'll just go get the yellow color that will be our tape, crime tape. And we'll just fill that selection in, making sure we're on our new layer. Fill that selection in with that yellow color by pressing Option, Delete, or Alt, Backspace. And once that's done, I'll go ahead and hit Control-D or con Command-D to deselect. So there we've got the basic structure of our crime scene tape. Well, we've got to put some shading on it and some dimension to give it to make it look a little bit more realistic. So we're going to do that using the fibers filter inside Photoshop. Now, when you apply fibers, unfortunately, it only applies the filter up and down. So I'm going to have to rotate my entire document here. So I'm going to go under the image menu and go to rotate canvas, 90 degrees. I'm going to zoom out here so you can see. So we've got the entire document rotated. Well, I'm going to go and create a new layer. I'm actually going to drag this layer above so it's above any other layer in the file. I'm just going to fill this layer with a neutral 50% gray by pressing Shift-Delete. And we'll use 50% gray, OK. Then, I want to make sure that my foreground and background color are set to their default black and white before I run this filter. So I'm going to hit my D key, and that will set my default colors. Now we'll go into the Filter menu to Render, Fibers. And we will get the fibers window. We can play with the variance. I'm just actually going to drop the variance just a little bit to about 10. Strength, I'm going to leave it around 4. And then I'm just going to click randomize until I get, you know, a decent variation of patterns there. Let's see what this does. That doesn't look too bad. So what I want to do now is actually blur this the fibers filter we just applied. So I'm going to go into the filter menu again to blur. This time we're going to do a motion blur. I want to go in the same direction that I applied the filter, but I'm just going to blur the detail out of it. So we're going to go straight up and down 90 degrees at an angle at a distance of 500 pixels. Looks pretty good, so I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. Now, I'm going to blur the overall image a little bit, just so the lines are not so sharp and streaky. So I'm just going to go under to blur again. This time to go to Gaussian Blur. Just give it a slight, about a 5 pixel blur like that. Looks pretty good. And we'll hit OK. Now, I'm going to go ahead and rotate the image back to its original place. We rotated it clockwise last time, so we're going to bring it back counterclockwise. And just to make sure our text is straight up. There it goes. All right. Now, what we're going to do with this fibers layer is two things. We're going to use it as a displacement map, and we're also going to use it to generate our shading. So the, to make the displacement map, I'm just going to go under the image menu to duplicate. Create a duplicate of this file. I'm going to go under layer and go to flatten image. So we just have a flattened grayscale file here. I'm just going to go under the my file menu, go to save as. And we'll just call this displace1. It's going to save it as a PSD file straight to my desktop. And there we have that. I can just close that. And now we're back to our original working file. Now, I'm going to turn off this shaded layer for a moment. And what I'm going to do here, I'm going to turn off the background layer because I don't want the white to be part of my graphic. I want to merge these two layers, but I don't necessarily want to render the text to rasterize. That way, I'll, so I won't be able to go back and edit the text. So I want to make sure I can be able to go back and edit the text when I need to. But I do need the text and the yellow part to be on the same layer. So I'm going to go into the layer menu here. Let's make sure we've got one of the visible layers highlighted. Go into that layer menu and go down to Merge Visible. But before I select Merge, merge Visible, I'm going to hold down the Option key or the Alt key on the PC. And what that will do is merge all the visible layers to a new layer, just like this. So there I have my merged layer, but also I have the two original layers if I need to get back to them. 
So here I have my merged layer. I'm going to go ahead and distort this using that displacement map we created. So with that layer selected, I'm going to go under Filter to Distort, Displace. And since I know that the streaks I created are going horizontally, well, they were actually going vertically when we created, but when we, we rotated it back, they're now going horizontal, I want to that horizontal scale to be a little bit more than that vertical scale. So I'm going to go ahead and leave this horizontal scale at 8, vertical scale at 3. Stretch to fit and wrap around, be in place. We'll hit OK. We'll get these the open dialog here, we simply need to go and seek out that displacement map we just created, which is displace one. There it is. And watch what's going to happen when I open this. Click open. There it's distorted my crime tape there. Well now it's distorted, but it still doesn't have the shading to really give the effect that it's got some depth in there. And that's where this uh, layer is going to come into play. It's going to turn that layer on and simply change its blending mode to hard light. And there you can see it's actually starting to look pretty good. Well, it's showing up on the outside of the tape. We can fix that simply by creating a clipping mask. If I hold down my Option or Alt key, create a clipping group out of that, there we have our dimensional crime tape. So all we got to do now, let's bring up an image. Here's a lovely crime scene image. I'll just select both of these layers. Hold down the Shift key to select both layers. Drag it into my new document here. And let's just kind of scale this in. Just like that. Maybe rotate it like it's really crime tape stretched across the scene. And there we have a real crime scene tape.